welcome to room tour number two. I am staying at the Le Meridien Etois. Don't ask me where it is. I, I have no idea. It's not very far from the Champs Elysees, whatever. So we have some closet space here, which is nice. And actually have two full length mirrors. So I have just a myriad of choices, although I can't really get a good like you can't really step back enough here to get a good thing. This is interesting. So my bathroom is split up into two places, which, you know, if you're sharing with somebody is always a nice thing. So there is the toilet. <clears throat> and then here is the shower and tub and vanity, which, you know, for my purposes, being one person is perfectly adequate. One thing that I will tell you, so this is a smart hotel, which means that you place your key in here and it turns all the lights on. So you can't control the lights until you put your key there. So it's a nice place because then you just kind of take it when you leave and put it in when you arrive. I'm assuming we have a little espresso machine here. I'm assuming yeah, we've got our safe and a little mini fridge in case one needs that. And then here is my room, which is pretty big for Paris standards. I actually have a king size bed, which again is nice. And people who are checking in next to me at the uh, Bonvoy Elite desk were told that they were going to have to have two separate beds, like two twins. So anyway, here's the other full length mirror. I'll probably move that out of the way so I can take proper full length photos of my outfits of the day, but in, yeah, obviously we've got a TV, a little kind of sitting area, a nice little couch. That, if I had to guess, maybe that pulls out into some kind of bed. Not that I need that. And then a little desk, which will be good for editing. And I have absolutely no view, so I won't even bother opening the curtains. But as I said, you know, a pretty good size room for Paris. We have definitely been in smaller. So this was an upgraded room to a larger size and to the king size bed, which was nice. So an official bonjour to coming to Paris with me and starting our adventure here. So I am going to unpack a little bit, freshen up a little bit, and then we will head out and see where the day takes us. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet. I, I need to look at my list now. I have a very long, like two page front and back list of stores that I wanna go to, places that I wanna see. So I kind of need to, I should have probably done this yesterday or I should have spent maybe the train trip doing this, organizing a little bit so I kind of know where I'm going to go each day. Maybe geographically would make sense. But uh, I didn't, so maybe I'll do that now. <laughs> but I will get those things done and I will check in with you later. and I just passed Gucci and Giacomo's, interestingly. <laughs> Giacomo's have a line of like quite a few people. We've got, uh, what's up here? Dolce & Gabbana, across the street. Oh, I'm on the wrong side of the street. Oh dear. Uh, so I've got Chloe here and Ralph Lauren. But on the other side of the street is Celine, which I am definitely going to go into. Uh, Balenciaga, which I am not going to go into. But, oh, and there's the Dior, I think, right there. So, yeah, lots of beautiful, beautiful stores. Try not to get hit by a car. Probably a good thing. At least they drive the correct way here, so I know which way to look when I'm crossing the street and I'm not going to get hit, hopefully. So, all right, I'll flip it around and I'll show you. Oh, and Saint Laurent is right next door. Marnie is on the other side. My goodness, we're just in luxury heaven here. So 
There's Balenciaga. Olive is across the street. And here is Celine. So my first stop was in the Celine boutique on Avenue Montaigne. Tried on a couple pair of sunglasses. I just think Celine does sunglasses so well. I love the pair that I have and would definitely be open to adding another to my collection. Then I moved on to bags. This little like vanity case, not sure what it is, was so heavy. I was shocked at how heavy that bag was. And now I'm just kind of showing you what was on display. For all you magpies out here, there is a very glittery sequin bag. This is a new bag. I I think it's called the Anita. It says it's new on the website and it also says from the runway. So would be a great work tote. I'm sure you could probably fit a 13 inch MacBook in there or certainly an iPad. Here are some of the Ava bags in leather. They have such gorgeous leather at Celine. And here are is the wall of Triumphs. So that was mainly the bag that I was looking to perhaps add to my collection. As you know, I have the one in black. So I was trying on this one, which is kind of an elephant, sort of. You can see it's a different color than my sand Lueve puzzle, but a little more on the gray tones. And then I decided to try on this lizard bag. So this is the team in the Triumph in the like Himalayan lizard. I was hoping they had like burgundy in the lizard. They only seem to have black. Just over here. They've got burgundy in croc. But that's $23,000. And here is the mothership Fendi. Let's go in. Oh, that's interesting. There's a Fendi over here, but there's also a Fendi over there. I don't know what the difference is. We will have to find out. So the Fendi on Avenue Montaigne is a really large store. My understanding of the store across the street was it was added, I think, as a pop-up for a specific reason, and then they just kept the store. So it's just basically a duplicate store, but much, much smaller. So as you walk into the store on the right-hand side are some of the newer bags. You saw the new origami bags. And then I loved how they had their bags displayed in sort of by style. So this was a whole wall of baguettes. Absolutely beautiful. Here I am, of course, trying on that just spectacular pink sequin baguette. I just love this bag. It is gorgeous. I would love to add it to my collection. Here it is with that new strap that I showed you in Selfridges. It's actually reversible to kind of a brown print. And then here was this gorgeous wall of peekaboos with exotics and regular leather and ICUs and iconics, just every peekaboo you could possibly think of. So I am up on the Avenue Montaigne on the second floor, or what they call the first floor here, looking at some ready to wear. I'm going to try on some coats. I already tried on the large puffer. So I already tried on this coat, which is very practical for New York. You know, it's short and it, you look like the uh, Michelin man in it, but it's definitely a good New York coat. Okay, so this I think is a new season piece. It is really great, like spring, fall jacket. Somebody else just got this jacket recently, so I'm twinning. <laughs> I'm not going to say who, though. You'll have to stay tuned for unboxings, but it is really, really, really nice. So, left Fendi. They, they basically had a, the coat that I wanted not in the right size. They had one too small, one too big. They did the Goldilocks thinking about another one and then the blazer that I've always been wanting they also didn't have in the right size so 
left there. Now I am just walking down Avenue Montaigne again. Where's it? Probably go hit up Dior because the flagship 30 Montaigne is right there. And I did go into Chanel. They have the tweed bag, both tweed bags actually, that I am interested in looking at, but they weren't taking any more people on the wait list because they were getting ready to close in like half an hour. So they could, said I could look around, but they told me to come back tomorrow if I want to actually shop. So that's fine. I've got time. So let's see what's coming up here. Like I said, I see Dior over on the other side. Here's a Jimmy Choo store. Kind of overcast now. I was hoping, I thought there was a Louis Vuitton on this. On this street. I'll have to go look at my notes because I was hoping to go look at some things there. I guess the St. Laurent store is moving. Down here to this enormous space. I'm sure it will be beautiful when it's done. It's Valentino. I said there is 30 Montaigne. I said I'm gonna hit Louis Vuitton before, if I have time, I will head over to Dior, but I can always come back. did my good deed for the day. An American stopped me and said, do you speak English? I said, yes, I do. She was looking for the Christian Louboutin store. And uh, anyway, I'm like, just look it up on Google Maps. But anyway, I helped her find it. It's on St. Honoré. It's not on Avenue Montaigne. Hopefully she'll find it. I said, they close at seven. You got an hour. more like that. It's a really dark navy. So if you watched my Paris wish list video, you know that the Capucine was on a possible list. And after seeing so many beautiful exotics while I was in London, this was a big ask for me. So all of the stores I went to, I wanted to see what their quote, special Capucines were. And this one did not disappoint. It's cute. I like this. This is a piece that you will wear for many years. Yeah. Not entirely sure what's happening here at the Dior store. Huge Celine store. Wow. So right now I'm just walking out and about. I'm going to head towards the Arc de Triomphe just so I can, you know, experience some other parts of Paris other than just shopping. So I'll take you to see that. The architecture here is just gorgeous. It's really just, it's intricate and old and you just look at these buildings and think, oh my gosh, like how long did it take to build them? <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me how magnificent the architecture here is, or honestly anywhere in Europe for that matter. So anyway, I had a lovely time in Louis Vuitton on Avenue Montaigne. 
they're actually going to bring in a jacket for, or a coat for me that they didn't have from another store and they're also going to bring in a Lisa wallet, yay! <laughs> so hopefully I'm going to get at least one of the things off my wish list. I'm excited about that. And yeah, just met a lovely sales associate. Actually the first person that I was working with I think was the store director. She wasn't even a sales associate and she was just so helpful and so kind. And so yeah, so and I put a couple things on hold for them to bring those other things in because I'm trying to decide between a couple of them and then one I was gonna buy, but she's like, oh, we'll just hold it till tomorrow when you come back. So right now, like I said, I'm just out walking. Most of the stores have closed for the evening. Although maybe some of these, like I'm walking by right now and here's, well, no, Zimmerman is closed. Then there's a, I think it's just called Bash. It's the B-A and S-H also closed so I guess they all kind of close between six to seven ish the Louis Vuitton was actually open until 7 30 so definitely later than some of the other stores I think Chanel closed at 6 30 Celine I think closed at 6 30 but anyway so across the street I see a Balmain and yeah, it's just a beautiful area. I'll flip the camera around so you can see. This is a new location for them. I don't think this is. I think the original location is on Rue Saint Honore. So I think this is a new location. And then I think that I have stumbled upon Hermes Georges Sank, which I also have never been to. And it's just such a different vibe than a lot of the other Hermes stores. So I'll show you the windows while I'm here. I've got little sea urchins, I assume. I think those are supposed to be jellyfish. So let's see what we see. We see a suede. I don't know what color that is, but a suede Constance 18. No idea what that little SLG is. Some belts. Have a. It's called the Geta bag, something like that. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Something like that. I have no idea. Maybe I. I don't know. I'm not gonna guess. My understanding is that this store is kind of stuffy in sort of demeanor. I think more locals shop here and it's much smaller. Hello. So on my way to the Champs-Elysees, I happened upon the Louis Vuitton. Turn left onto Avenue des Champs-Elysees. I don't know if they're still open. They are. I might sneak in. The store may be open until like eight or maybe even nine because of where it's located. Okay, I'm kind of loving this petite mall in the, I can't, they have a name for this new leather that they're doing, like the go one for pattern, but in the petite mouth. Yeah, I'm loving it. And I'm also loving the Oma in it. Not in the PM, but in the BB. See the Arc de Triomphe in the background there. I'm going to see if D 
Dior is still open or not. This is the Tweed. This is new collection and it's in Tweed. What do you think? I think I would like it better in the small, but that's pretty cool. And look at this one. It is absolutely stunning with the flowers, but that's, that's also a medium. And they've got some really pretty exotics. That's a python. That I think is lizard and an ostrich. So here's the tweed bag with the chain link strap on it just to show you where it comes under the arm for me. I, I'm not the biggest fan of the medium size. I really prefer the small. Would love it if they came out with a mini, something in between the small and the nano. This is the new Boston bag that I was trying to find when I was in London, but nobody knew what I was talking about. Cute bag, handheld, not my favorite crossbody. It is super boxy. They only had the small size. It also comes in a medium, which I think would be even boxier on the frame. And here are just a panning of what they had on display. They had quite a few exotic Lady Dior's on display, some beautiful crocodile. Here are those little mini Lady Dior's, I think they're calling them, or mini Dior Lady, something like that. So I wanted to try on some of their exotic bags in the D-Lite. I also wanted to compare pricing. I will tell you that in general, Dior's exotics seem to run higher than Louis Vuitton. So I think you get more bag for your money at Louis Vuitton when you're talking about an exotic, but this was a beautiful ostrich bag. And then you'll see, I'll start trying on some of the, you know, the standard lambskin, which is just beautiful. I, I'm really, really drawn to this ivory color. It's been on my list, again, if you watched my Paris wish list, you'll know that that was one that I was looking for. And then here it is in the classic black. You guys know I'm a black bag girl and just, just stunning. So definitely still on the wish list. So the last time that I was in Paris, which was exactly two years ago with David, the Arc de Triomphe was completely covered in scaffolding because they were refurbishing it. <laughs> they were giving it a little facelift. I don't know. They were they were rehabbing it. Uh, so anyway, it looks lovely now, and certainly much more lovely than it did all covered in scaffolding. So yeah, beautiful. Might be hard, but hopefully you guys can see. There is the Eiffel Tower in the background. Okay, so I thought I would wrap up this vlog by kind of going through what I saw today, my thoughts on them, etc. The first stop was Celine, I guess. I think that's right. And I'm very interested potentially in getting a lizard triumph bag but I need to find the right color. They only had the regular size in the black. Now they did have the like Himalayan version in the teen size, which still would work size wise, but I really do think that I prefer the regular or medium, whatever it's called, classic size Triumph bag. And she only had it in black. And I already have a black Triumph bag in that size. So I certainly don't need a lizard one was really hoping to have like a burgundy. So we'll try some other stores for that. Then I went to Fendi and tried on, you saw a lot of ready to wear. I really, really still like that gray wool coat that has the mink FF fur pockets. It is $5,500 if I'm not mistaken, Euro. So I think it was seven, I'm pretty sure it was 7,000 USD. 5,500 euro, so you get the 12% off of that, do the conversion, still a really good savings. Speaking of which, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a list of all the items that I'm interested in with the like euro price minus the VAT converted to USD compared to the USD price with tax. Hopefully that makes sense. So I can kind of compare what the savings would be. Not that I'm looking for that to dictate what I'm gonna buy and what I'm not gonna buy, but just more of a, like 
okay, how much do I feel comfortable spending? This is how much I'm spending, that kind of thing. Because just doing it in euros, like, you, you need to make sure you're doing it in USD because it's a little bit different. Right now it's 1.06 euros to the dollar. So anyway, back to Fendi. I really, really liked that gray coat still, but she didn't have it in the right size. So she is bringing it in from a different store, if I'm not mistaken. So I will go back there. She did not have also the black silk blazer that I have been hemming and hawing about <laughs> to see if I want to get that. And then I also tried on the navy sort of fall spring wrap coat that was short, so cute, so flattering. So I'm I'm got those sort of three as a potential. And then I'm really, really interested in either the mini fuchsia baguette in the leather or the fuchsia sequin bigger baguette. Possibly even then with the strap, the fuchsia strap but we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'm kind of have to think about that. So those are kind of the bags at Fendi that I'm thinking about along with the ready to wear. Then I went to, into Chanel. You did not see Chanel, but as I mentioned, they did have both pink tweed bags that I was looking for. The one tweed bag that I am talking about, I thought was a little bit more like the houndstooth tweed that came out several years ago but I was looking at it in a teeny, teeny, tiny little swatch picture on a Facebook group and it looked more black and white. It's actually more like pink with black and white, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't go like super up close, but I, I think I got some footage of that. I might've taken a picture, I can't remember. And then they also had the pink and white tweed bag in that same style that I tried on at uh, 57th Street at the flagship boutique in New York that had the kind of, it had a little top handle and then it had you know, a crossbody strap and it was too small for my phone. So we'll see whether the tweed one makes any difference. If it doesn't fit my phone, then it's a no-go because it looks like it should fit my phone. And because of that, if it doesn't, it's out. So we'll go back there. Obviously we'll ask for the Kelly, see if they have any right now. You know, no one could help me. So we'll, we'll go back another day, either tomorrow or another day. Then I moved on to Louis Vuitton where I tried on quite a few pieces of outerwear. Most of them you did not see, but I tried on the longer version of the wrap coat, which has been probably on my wish list since, oh my gosh, it's probably been almost five years. I remember seeing it for the first time when Karis bought it from LB Lover CC, and I like have liked it ever since. So that's been a long time wish list item for me. And obviously because I'm outdoors more, walking in the elements and needing like warm coats. That felt sort of like a good idea for me, potentially. So I tried on that one, but they didn't have any colors that I wanted in the size that I needed. So she gave me one in beige to try on that was in, I think like a 38. Anyway. So she is bringing that coat in. And then I tried on a puffer coat, which I do think that you saw some footage of, which I really, really like. They're holding that for me till tomorrow when I go in to see the other coats, so I can kind of compare. I tried on like this puffer cape thing. That was a no for me. That's a no for me, dog. And what else did I try on? I tried, I tried on a whole bunch of different versions of, of like wool coats. One was reversible, but I really didn't like that. It only came in like a, this kind of weird, in my mind, beige. And then it reversed to like this kind of cream with beige print on it. I don't know. It just, it wasn't doing it for me. And then there was like an asymmetrical coat, which had it not been asymmetrical, I would have loved it. But I hated the way the like, the collar and the hood like laid, like this side was like way big and this side looked normal and this side just looked wrong. And anyway, <laughs> so they're holding the puffer coat for me. They're bringing in the black wrap coat in the right size from another store. They are also bringing in a Lisa wallet with the pink interior. So I'm very excited about that. And they are holding a mini pochette accessoire because that is going to be a sweet 16 gift for Hannah at such time when she turns 16. And the let's talk the mini capucines in the navy. Absolutely stunning. 
absolutely beautiful. But I want to see what other color options there are out there. That was the only ostrich mini peekaboo, or not mini peekaboo, mini capucines that they had in store. They had another, like a, they had a green in the BB and they had something else in the BB. They didn't have any in lizard. I was also interested in lizard potentially. So there are many, many more Louis Vuitton boutiques that I can go check out. So we'll see what they have. If that navy one isn't there anymore, then it wasn't meant to be, is my perspective. Then we went to Dior. Tried to go to another Louis Vuitton, but they cut me off. They cut off the line right before I got there. So I ended up just stopping at Dior on my way to the Arc de Triomphe and tried on some DJs, tried on that new Boston bag. Super cute, handheld, definitely a no crossbody. It is way too boxy, too big on the body, even in the small. I would never wear it crossbody. So that one very quickly went by the wayside. But I'm glad I got to see it because when I was in London, they didn't have it. They didn't even know what I was talking about. I couldn't remember the name, but I was trying to describe it and they, none of them knew what I was talking about. And then I found it online and they're like, oh yeah, no, we don't have that bag. So what else did I try on? I mostly tried on DJs, I guess. Yeah, in some different exotics and in some plain, but then they were closing. And so she is just, I'm gonna, call her, text her tomorrow when I want to come back in so I can look again. But that is what we saw today, folks. So quite a few very, very pretty items. No decisions being made yet, but you know, we'll let a couple days go by. I, I probably won't do any real purchasing. No, that's not true. I will certainly purchase the Lisa wallet, or I think I'll buy Maybe not, maybe I'll hate it, I've never seen it. So I guess I shouldn't say that. I know for sure that I'm getting the mini pochette accessoire because that's for Hannah. Other than that, everything else is kind of up in the air. We'll see what I find, you know, kind of do some math to make sure I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable in what I'm spending. And yeah, so I think I am going to make some notes here and then I'm gonna to go to bed. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm. And let me know in the comments, what was your favorite item that I showed in the vlog today? I would love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I am trying to get to 3,000 subscribers and I am getting closer every day, but I would like to hit that mark by the end of the year. So if you can help me out with that, I would greatly appreciate it. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. And if you haven't had enough of me yet, I will pop another video up here for you to watch. And wherever you are, I hope you are having an amazing day or evening and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.